The World Swimming Governing Body effectively prevented transgender women from competing at the highest levels of women's international competitions. This fueled a discussion about gender in sports that has roiled state legislatures and further divided parents, athletes, and coaches at all levels. Now, you must have plenty of questions, starting with what went wrong. Keep watching this video to find out all the deets. First up, FINA has restricted transgender women. The FINA vote, which governs international water sports championships, prohibits transgender women from competing unless they they underwent medical procedures to reduce testosterone production before entering one of the early phases of puberty or by the age of 12, whichever occurred later. This is one of the most severe laws prohibiting transgender athletes from participating in international sports. Scientists believe that the beginning of male puberty provides transsexual women with a permanent, irreversible physical edge over athletes who were born feminine. In addition, world swimming would create a new open category for athletes who identify as female but do not meet the qualification to compete against individuals individuals who were born female. More than 70% of FINA's member federations decided to ratify the policy, which was developed by a working group comprised of athletes, scientists, and medical and legal experts last November. Moving on, what does the president of the federation have to say? The federation's president stated that they must protect their athletes' right to compete, but they must also protect competitive fairness at the events, particularly in the women's category at FINA tournaments. The World Swimming Championships feature no transgender women. The decision occurred just three months months after Leah Thomas became the first transgender woman to win an NCAA Division I swimming championship, winning the 500-yard women's freestyle, bringing attention to the subject. She hasn't said anything about her victory, but she recently told Sports Illustrated that she is not a male. Because she identifies as a female, she belongs on the women's team. She also stated that she aspires to qualify for the U.S. 2024 Olympic team, but she would be ineligible to compete under the new rules. Next up, let's learn about the new rules. During Thomas's championship season, the USA Swimming, the sport's national governing body, passed new rules that allowed transgender women to compete if they had taken testosterone-suppressing medication for 36 months. The ruling aligned the organization with several other regulating bodies, from track and field to cycling, that have relied on testosterone levels to determine who gets to compete against competitors who were born female. FINA's guidelines only apply to international tournaments, although they may serve as a model for other sports federations dealing with the issue. Swimming USA stated that they would evaluate the FINA guideline before determining whether to change its own rules. According to the association, USA Swimming will continue encouraging inclusion in the sport while guaranteeing competitive parity. They recognize FINA's significant effort in developing its gender inclusion and equity policy. Plus, they will now take their time to examine the implications of this international standard on current policies. Following up, what about the advocates on both sides? Advocates on both sides of the issue claimed the world swimming body's decision might enhance the growing trend to ban transgender women from participating in sports, including recreational ones. This could happen while undermining attempts to offer people equal access to sports regardless of their gender at birth. Sports federations have attempted to create policies that try to combine science and fair play, which has inevitably enraged individuals at all levels of the sport. It's quite regrettable that FINA made this decision, said Joanna Harper, a medical physicist who has written extensively on gender and sport, and she advised various international sports federations, including the International Olympic Committee saying trans women are not and will not take over women's sports. According to Alejandra Carballo, a Harvard Law School instructor and transgender expert, the FINA rule would pave the way for other bodies to impose such stringent bans. This will also force athletes to produce up to 10 years' worth of invasive medical documents and blood testing. Coming up, this regulation is deeply discriminatory, harmful, and unscientific. The regulation is profoundly discriminatory, damaging, and unscientific, according to Ann Lieberman, the director of policy and programs at Athlete Ally, a group that advocates for the rights of LGBTQ athletes. This was also contradictory to the International Olympic Committee's principles on justice and inclusivity. They said that the restrictions would be unenforceable unless major violations of an athlete's privacy and human rights were committed. Athletes can file an appeal with the Court of Arbitration for Sport, the world's top sports court situated in Switzerland. What's more, let's learn about some past actions. The court has accepted International Sports Federation's authority to establish regulations for athlete classification based on testosterone levels. In 2019, the Supreme Court upheld the World Track and Field Federation's regulations on athletes born with both male and female genitalia, which barred them from competing unless they took testosterone-lowering medicine. In November, the International Olympic Committee delegated eligibility requirements in women's sports to individual sports-governing organizations. But it also stated that unless evidence proved otherwise, athletes should not be considered to have an unfair or disproportionate competitive advantage because 
because of their gender differences, physical appearance, or transgender status. Lastly, did FINA get it right? FINA has gotten this right. It is unjust for female athletes to compete against transgender women who have benefited from testosterone throughout male puberty. At this point, the science appears to be obvious. If this is right, FINA must weigh the unfairness against those who want to compete. Given the significantly bigger number of women than transsexual women, FINA's attitude is understandable in this aspect. Now, on to some other news. First off, Soul Cap, Afro Swimming Cap Approved After Olympic Ban A swimming cap designed for people with Afro hair has been certified for use in high-level events. The specialized covering, meant for thick, curly hair and styles like dreadlocks, weaves, and braids, was banned from the Olympics last year. The certification from governing body FINA was praised by manufacturer Soul Cap as a major step in the right direction. The corporation is looking forward to the future of a sport that is becoming more accessible. FINA Executive Director Brett Nowicki stated that the announcement comes after a year of assessment and discussion on cap design between FINA and Soul Cap. Plus, fostering diversity and inclusivity is central to FINA's activities. It is also critical that all aquatic athletes have access to adequate swimwear. Because it has fewer cell layers, afro hair is inherently drier than other hair. Swimming pool sodium hypochlorite, or bleach, might further dry it out, causing harm. Soul Cap claimed last year that FINA informed them the caps weren't appropriate because they didn't match the natural form of the head. Many swimmers were outraged by the remarks, with some claiming that it will discourage black people from engaging in the sport. Up next, bear spotted chilling in California swimming pool. When a Simi Valley resident looked outdoors and found a black bear cooling off in his pool, he was taken aback. He happened to look out the window and believed he saw someone swimming in the pool. And he was like, who the heck is in my pool? A video shows the bear soaking by the pool's edge for a bit before climbing out and strolling away. Manuel claimed he stood there for a few minutes before dialing the non-emergency police number because he wasn't sure what to do. He claimed to have seen a bear in his pool. And then the emergency number representative questioned if he had been drinking. Temperatures in Simi Valley reached 108 degrees over the weekend, so Emanuel said it was understandable that the bear wanted to cool off. Authorities were notified after a bear entered another person's kitchen through an open door and began devouring food that had been left out. Police believe it was the same animal. This is why locals were warned not to approach bears or get in their way. Finally, Kobe Carosa is getting comfortable in the spotlight. During his 10-year swimming career, Kobe Carosa has sat in many locker rooms, but it wasn't until this summer's FINA World Championships that Carosa realized the significance of where he sat and who was seated around him. This told him how far he'd come in the sport. He was used to sitting among other college swimmers, but never with the world's finest. He instantly comprehended what that moment signified as he looked around. Carosa placed 10th in the 400-meter freestyle at the Olympic trials in Omaha the previous summer and utilized the meet primarily as a learning lesson. But after a good collegiate season at the University of Texas, he swam a 147.3 in a team trial during practice and felt confident going into the World Championship trials earlier this spring. He spent the first five days of the meet in Budapest enjoying the experience and making mental notes. Carosa admitted that he was locked in on the sixth day, his competition day, and felt comfortable and ready to compete. He swam a leg in the morning prelims of the 4x200 meter freestyle relay and experienced cheering on his teammates while earning gold with them in the evening. That's a wrap for this video. What are your thoughts on FINA introducing a new policy for transgender swimming at the elite level? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.